In the words of the notorious pirate Blackbeard, let's jump aboard and cut them to pieces. Welcome to the golden age of pirates, a time of lawlessness, adventure, and untold riches. A period that spanned from the late 17th to early 18th century, the golden age of pirates is often romanticized in popular culture, painted with grand tales of fearsome sea rogues and buried treasures. But what was the reality of this era? Let's delve into the murky waters and dispel some common misconceptions. Contrary to the glamorous image of pirates living a life of ease and luxury, their existence was anything but. Life on the high seas was harsh and fraught with danger. Pirates faced not only the constant threat of death from enemy ships, but also from disease, malnutrition, and the merciless elements. As for the myth of the merciless, bloodthirsty pirate, the truth is a bit more nuanced. While pirates were certainly no saints, they weren't always the mindless killers they're often made out to be. Many turned to piracy as a last resort, driven by desperation and the promise of a better life. And while they did use violence to achieve their ends, they also relied heavily on intimidation tactics. A pirate's reputation was his greatest weapon. And what of the treasure? The iconic image of pirates burying their ill-gotten gains is largely a work of fiction. More often than not, pirates spent their loot as quickly as they got it, on provisions, ship repairs, and yes, on their infamous love for rum. So, the golden age of pirates was less about glittering gold and more about survival. About men and women pushed to the fringes of society who chose a life of danger and uncertainty over poverty and oppression. Now prepare to embark on a journey through some of the most thrilling tales from this treacherous yet intriguing period. Our first tale takes us to the fearsome figure of Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard. Born in the late 17th century, Edward Teach would go on to etch his name in the annals of history as Blackbeard, a name that still sends chills down the spine. Renowned for his imposing stature and his thick, black beard that he would twist and plait, Blackbeard was an image of terror. He was a master of psychological warfare, often tying slow-burning fuses into his beard and lighting them during battles to create a terrifying, smoky visage. Blackbeard's reputation was not simply born out of his terrifying appearance, he was also an effective commander, leading his crew with a fearsome yet charismatic approach. Known for his audacious raids, he struck fear in the hearts of sailors along the American coast and the West Indies, becoming the embodiment of the pirates' golden age. His flagship, Queen Anne's Revenge, was a sight to behold. Equipped with 40 cannons and manned by a crew of hardened pirates, it was a floating fortress that dominated the seas. Under Blackbeard's command, the ship led numerous successful raids, amassing a vast fortune and further cementing his reputation as the terror of the seas, but even the most fearsome reign has its end. Blackbeard's downfall came at the hands of Lieutenant Robert Maynard in a fateful encounter at Ocracoke Island. In a ferocious battle that lasted hours, Blackbeard and his crew fought valiantly, but ultimately, the pirate met his end. His head was severed and hung from the bow of Maynard's ship, a gruesome reminder of the fate that befell the terror of the seas. Yet even in death, Blackbeard's lore continues to live on. His tales of audacious raids and terrifying battles are still told, echoing through the annals of history. His name remains synonymous with the Golden Age of Pirates, a testament to his reign as the Terror of the Seas. Blackbeard's reign may have ended, but his legend lives on, a symbol of the terror that once ruled the seas. Not all pirates were men. Meet Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, two women who defied the norms and became feared pirates in their own right. Anne Bonny was born in Ireland around the late 17th century, the illegitimate child of a lawyer and his maid. Her fiery red hair matched her equally fiery spirit. Her family moved to the New World, where she grew up in the Carolinas. But the mundane life of a colonial woman didn't suit Anne. She yearned for adventure and she found it on the open seas. She fell in love with a pirate named Calico Jack, and together they plundered the Caribbean, striking fear in the hearts of sailors. Anne was as ruthless as any male pirate wielding her cutlass with deadly precision. Then, there was Mary Reed. She was born in England also in the late 17th century. At a young age, she was disguised as a boy by her mother to receive a deceased brother's inheritance. This early experience of living as a man would shape her future. Mary continued to live as a man, joining the British military and later finding her way onto a pirate ship. She met Anne Bonny while part of Calico Jack's crew. The two women, both living lives far removed from societal expectations, became fast friends. Their exploits were legendary, but their reign on the seas came to an end in 1720. 
The pirate hunters finally caught up with them. Calico Jack and his crew were captured with both Anne and Mary standing their ground fighting fiercely till the end. They were sentenced to hang, but both women pled their bellies, a term used when a woman claimed she was pregnant to avoid execution. Their lives after this point are shrouded in mystery, but their tales live on, inspiring countless stories and legends. These women left their mark on history, showing that the seas were not just a man's world. Pirates were not just ruthless criminals, they lived by a code, a pirate's code. Imagine a society where every man is equal, where the loot is divided fairly, and where decisions are made democratically. Sounds idyllic, doesn't it? Well, this was the reality on many pirate ships during the golden age of piracy. Yes, they were outlaws, but they weren't entirely lawless. They followed what was known as the Pirate's Code, a set of rules that governed life on the high seas. These codes varied from ship to ship, but there were several rules that were almost universally observed. First and foremost, the loot was divided equally among the crew. The captain and quartermaster might get a slightly larger share, but overall, the distribution was fair. This ensured that every pirate had a vested interest in the success of their raids. Thievery among the crew was absolutely forbidden. Seems ironic, doesn't it? Pirates stealing from each other was a big no-no. Any pirate caught stealing from his mates would face severe punishment, often marooning or even execution. This rule ensured trust and cooperation among the crew, essential elements for a successful pirate ship. And while the image of the tyrannical pirate captain is popular in fiction, the reality was often quite different. Pirate crews operated on a system of democracy. The captain was elected by the crew and could be voted out if he didn't perform up to their standards. Major decisions, like which ships to attack, were often put to a vote. This democratic nature of pirate crews was quite progressive for the time, and it played a significant role in maintaining order and discipline on the ship. So, next time you think of pirates as ruthless, lawless criminals, remember the Pirate's Code. These men might have been outlaws, but they had their own sense of order and justice. While they may have been outlaws, pirates had their own sense of order and justice. Like all good things, the golden age of pirates had to come to an end. A period steeped in infamy and legend, this era was not destined to last forever. Several factors played significant roles in the downfall of this wild epic, with the main culprits being increased naval patrols, the conclusion of the War of Spanish Succession, and a clever ploy involving royal pardons. As the 18th century unfolded, colonial powers began to increase their naval presence in the Caribbean and Atlantic trade routes. These patrols were specifically aimed at curbing piracy, and they were quite effective. Pirates found it increasingly difficult to operate with impunity. With many of their safe havens and favored hunting grounds now patrolled by well-armed naval vessels. The seas were no longer a pirate's playground. Simultaneously, the War of Spanish Succession, which had indirectly fueled the golden age of piracy by creating a surplus of skilled seamen turned buccaneers came to a close. With the end of the war in 1714, many pirates found themselves out of work and with fewer opportunities to ply their unlawful trade. The seas were becoming less lawless, and the age of pirates was waning, and then came the royal pardons. In a shrewd move by the colonial powers, pirates were offered pardons in exchange for their renunciation of piracy. Many, seeing the writing on the wall, took the offer and returned to a life of relative normalcy on land. The ranks of the pirates were further thinned and their golden age drew to a close. The golden age of pirates may have ended, but the fascination with these seafaring outlaws has not. Their tales of adventure, rebellion, and freedom continue to captivate our imaginations. Whether they are romanticized as daring rogues or demonized as ruthless criminals, pirates have become an enduring part of our cultural mythology. The golden age of pirates may be over, but their tales continue to captivate us, a testament to the enduring allure of these rebels of the sea.